level B. Um, happy week before spring break. We're almost finished with the year. Ah, I bet we're all so excited. I am. Um, okay, so um, we have been talking about conjunctions, which are words or phrases that put ideas, uh, phrases, sentences together. Okay, so last week we talked about coordinating subjunctions. And this week, we're talking about subordinating conjunctions. Subordinating conjunctions, okay? So, um, I am going to send you a couple different things, all right? So, you have this in your packet, and I will send you a copy of this so that you can copy it. You don't have to copy it from this video. I'll send you a PDF that will be easier for you to copy. And if you want to fill it out yourself, um, Behind this in your packet, there's this, which is like a big list of conjunctions with examples. So if you don't understand a conjunction, then you can look at this one and get an example, okay? Um, for this video, I'm just going to talk a little bit about what subordinating conjunctions are, and then I'm just going to read, read them so that you can hear how they're pronounced. Um, I will also send you a Quizlet, which is the flashcards, the features, okay, so that you can practice and memorize the subordinating conjunctions, okay? So, that's what we're doing today. This should be a really short video. All right, let's get started. Okay, so these are, okay. So last week we talked about coordinating conjunctions, which put together two equal ideas or phrases or whatever, okay? Um, subordinating conjunctions, they put together two ideas. There's a little idea and then a big idea, okay? So um, it's not two ideas that have the same importance. There's one small idea and one big idea. So here's an example, okay? After I ate tacos, I took a nap. So, in this sentence, the main event, the most important thing is here. I took a nap. We call this the independent clause. So, if I said, um, hey, what did you do this weekend? And you said, I took a nap. Then, that's a good sentence, right? I took a nap. That's You told me what you did. That's the important part of the sentence, okay? If I said, hey, what did you do this weekend? And you said, after I ate tacos, this is what we call a dependent clause because it's not a full thought, right? If I said, what did you do this weekend? And you said, after I ate tacos, I would be like, uh, after you ate tacos, what? Like, did you throw up? Did you watch a movie? Did you eat some ice cream? Like, you have to give me more after I ate tacos is not a full, complete sentence. So, in this sentence, that's the dependent clause, all right? And I took a nap is the independent clause. So, all of these, okay, all of these subordinating conjunctions help us add and connect a dependent clause to an independent clause, okay? So, I'm going to pronounce these today. I'm just going to read through these so you can practice the pronunciation, all right? And then um, I'll send you a few other things. All right. After, after, although, although, though, although, it's a TH sound in the middle. So it's th, th, though. Okay. It's not a D sound. It's not all do. No. Although. As a result, as a result. As if, as if, as long as, as long as, as much as, as much as, as soon as, as soon as, as though, as though, so you pronounce it just like although, though, as though. Because, because, before, before, even if, even if, 
don't forget the in sound, even if, even though, even though, and you might like the Spanish pronunciation for even, or the, yeah, the Spanish translation is the same as number two. So although, aunque, number 12 is even though, aunque, they're the same. The meaning is the same. You can switch the words out, okay? So you could say, I like although. Perfect, use although. I like even though. Perfect, use even though. They mean the same thing, okay? If, if, in order to, in order to, now that, now that, once, once, only if, only if, since, since, so that, so that, therefore, therefore, this one's very um, formal, we don't use it very often, but I wanted you to hear it, therefore, though, though, it's the same, though, although, even though. You can just say, though. Unless, unless, until, until. It's so, unless and until. When, whenever, whenever. Where, where, wherever, wherever weather weather so you say this the same as like the weather outside today it is sunny that's the weather you say it the same but they're spelled differently so this one has an h and no a it's not this word this is the like it's sunny outside weather this is weather but you say it the same all right while while Whoever, whoever, and whereas. This one is very formal, so we don't use it very often, but um, it does mean it's a comparison. So I am tall, whereas my sister is short, right? So uh, we use whereas to compare two things. So the President of the United States is rich, whereas the most of the people in the United States are not rich, right? So we're comparing them, kind of compare and contrast. Okay, we will do the notes part on Wednesday, and I'll send you a ton of ways to practice. Um, I don't expect you to memorize all of these, but I do want you to, like, be aware of them because uh, you will hear them, you will read them, so it's good for you to know what they mean. All right, I'll see you on Wednesday.